two months. It's been two months since I've done pretty much anything on this truck. Um, partially because I'm doing videos for you guys on this truck. Uh, skid plates and uh, the roof rack and, and diff bushings and um, the sway bar disconnects and all that stuff. So let's get back onto this thing. I need to get this thing built. Um, I should have my crank for the motor back here in another couple of weeks. Um, I've got uh, a line on the engine harness and I'm working on my doubler and uh, getting the 6080 figured out. So um, things are happening, things are moving, but I haven't made a video on it for like two months. So let's, uh, let's finally get this suspension links and everything kind of move where they need to be. Um, I think I'm not gonna fully weld them just yet, but I will uh, heavily tack them in place just in case I decide to move them once the tires get here, um, which is another phone call that I gotta make. So uh, let's get into it. One hour later. I don't know if I want to rely on the structural integrity of two bolts for quite literally the better part of the suspension mounting or the link mounting and the trans mount. Maybe I need to pull some measurements on my 6L80 real quick and see where this ends up. I think it's only within about an inch or so of where it needs to be. I guess I'll just take this down and uh, Axle's not going to go anywhere because it's kind of there on that side. So let me get that link off and down and then I can pull my high clearance trans mount and uh, we'll see what the, what the rest of it looks like when I move this about two inches forward. Wow, that is a lot of force. Is that for a camera angle? Well, sufficient to say those weren't coming out anytime soon. That's just tight. Dang. Well, at least you know I'm strong enough or was six years ago. Jeez. There you go. Those are pretty beefy. I mean, those are 20 some odd pounds a piece. Quarter inch wall, two by two, like 36 inches, I think. All right, I'll keep grinding. Technically, that's got to be about there, give or take. I really probably need to do it like inboard. I had to change blades. I couldn't quite get deep enough into the cut here to uh, to knock this back, but I got this pretty flush. We'll have this out later. But I had issues with my 37s turning. You guys can see that here. That's that shiny spot was where the, the 37 inch Toyos rub. It looked really good. The 37s just didn't didn't appreciate it too much. So I know I need to move these inboard, and so I 
I think what I'm going to do is tighten this up, put this back on, and see kind of where everything lines up so I can get the link inboard so that my 40 now can swing inboard a little bit better. So let's do that. There she goes. So these are opposing threads. This is left hand, that's right hand, I believe. It's wise to do that so that you can adjust your links on the vehicle. You don't have to take a take a joint off to uh, to do it. So because I know this axle is pretty much where it needs to be, thanks to the the 40, I'm only gonna leave about a maybe three eighths of an inch there. And I'll leave a little bit more than that here. So you guys can see where it was. So. Almost. Almost an inch, inch and a half inboard below the frame here so that even if I were to do it, it would rub the frame and the bar and everything would be good. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt back at least for mock-up purposes, I'm going to bolt this back in. I forget which way it goes. Probably went this way. Bolt my high clearance transmount back up there temporarily. I need to figure out a way of either manufacturing a cross member here or something. I need to get my links figured out. I need to get my transfer case drive shaft figured out. Because of the doubler, I need to kind of know where that is uh, in relationship to this torsion key cross member which is likely going to be quite a bit in the way i might end up cutting most of this out and just having a plate under it and that's it this uh this pinion is only about i don't know two or three inches below the frame so i don't believe i need to drop the transfer case much if at all i mean it's going to be you know four or five inches apart so but these, this thing's got so much droop that i really don't want to um bind anything up even though it's like a three foot or 40 inch long drive shaft so hopefully i need to cut that too much that's kind of part of the reason i was bolting that up the other day in the uh, youtube short now i gotta pull the 680 out and uh start pulling tape because this next uh this next few things are gonna be pretty critical so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to cut the other link off and bolt this back into place and that's where you guys are going to come back right now 6080, doubler, 241. I had the foresight back when I was doing the doubler to get a driver drop, regular uh, transfer case or complete transfer case. And I got the passenger drop for the doubler. And so what that allows me to do is have one of my shift rails on this side or one of my shift linkages over here and my other one over there. And uh, looks like the drive shaft will fit quite nicely. But uh, I wanted to see kind of spatially exactly where all this went. Um, I got my 32 in spline input. I've actually got another 32 spline input. The back back there is 32 splines, so it's all beefed up. Um, everything is pretty much as strong as I can make it. The We'll discuss here in a minute the way this is going to mount. We'll be back up in the keyway uh, cross member, so it'll be completely... Uh, feasible to create some sort of a, a bracket or bushing or uh, something like that to you know, keep the keep the back end up. So I stole Zach's Colorado grills because I'm doing a video on how to install Raptor lights. And I've got the candy grill on the blue truck and I've got now Zach's Colorado grill. And I figured I'd take the opportunity to see just how high in person the cut is going to be you guys know that I bought the Holden Colorado lights and I'm not entirely against putting those on the truck, but after a lot of consideration and just kind of going back and forth on the amount of work that it's going to take to do that, um, I don't know that I want to do the Holden lights. Um, I might hang on to them or um, Maybe if one of you guys want to buy them from me, you can comment below or send me an email and I will uh, give you a price. Hopefully we can get uh, a little bit of money out of those back to put into this build. Um, I'm really liking the Jewel uh, DRL lights that I've been working on 
and I've got some other um, animated uh, switchback uh, lights that are going to go inside of it that look pretty cool. So I'm kind of hoping that the DRLs that I'm kind of working on are going to look better and then we'll do the kind of round style uh, seven inch light. If uh, I sell a couple more things that I've been holding on to for a while, I might uh, just go ahead and get glass, uh, fiberglass. So um, maybe you guys are going to have to stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, so let's go into the truck and let's uh, talk about all the spatial constraints of the transmission, transfer cases, and cross members and all of that stuff. All right, so I got this guy mounted back up. Basically, the 6L80 will mount pretty much right where this was within half an inch or so. Right here will be kind of the front output of the TK flange. So basically from here up to the pinion right here is about 40 some odd inches. It's just about 40 inches or so from the yoke to the flange. So my drive shaft will be about 40 inches long, which is pretty fantastic because my links are also about 40 inches long. I kind of designed it like that when I was doing this a couple years ago. Actually, they're just a touch shorter, 36 and a half. I should have almost no drive shaft plunge um, for the, the front shaft. So essentially that'll be kind of where the drive shaft is. And you guys can see as it goes up, I've got to, I've got to make a way for this to one, mount the link right back here as well as have clearance for the drive shaft. These will all end up here somehow. I've got a little bit of a cutout here for the transfer case, the rear transfer case that's gonna be dangling right here. It's gonna end up kind of in this area. So I'll end up just kind of cutting this and, and end up plating it somehow. That'll be nice because I'll have basically protection for it and I'll be able to put a mount back here and basically mount the rear of the transfer case as well as the transmission as well as the engine so this whole entire system is going to be mounted with you know four different bushings here so i just have to figure out how this is going to look because not only do i have the drive shaft coming through here but i've got all my fuel lines plus i've got my exhaust i'd rather have duels going out but at any point i'm going to have almost no room right here so I don't quite know how I should do it. I believe what will end up happening or what I'll end up having to do is it'll come off the driver's side here under the front bell housing right behind the oil pan and then come into another pipe. Um, I'd probably like to end up doing just one big three inch on the way back. Um, we'll see what I can kind of steal off of the Yukon. So there's a lot going on with this one cross member. I have to deal with the exhaust. I've got to deal with the drive shaft. I've got to deal with the fuel lines. I've got to deal with an awful lot of things. The oil pan and the transmission. There's just a lot of spatial constraints and a lot of important things that have to go right here. So that's one of the things that's kind of been on my mind and, and kind of I haven't really fleshed out uh, in my mind and, and on CAD yet. And so that's part of the reason why I haven't really been um, wanting to do this because it's it's so difficult and I needed a couple parts for the, uh, the doubler and, and the T-cases. So I wanted to make sure that that all kind of got here before I started bolt things together and knowing where everything fits. It doesn't look like I need to clock the transfer case at all because the pinion's so high. It'll droop out pretty far, but it just doesn't seem to me like I need to... Um, drop the transfer case at all so i'm really hoping i can keep it where it's at for now i'm gonna say probably just putting it at you know straight up and down and that way it keeps my oil pump in the right spot it keeps all the all the other things in the right uh, orientation so uh, that'll be good for that i think i'm gonna stop the video here um just for a simple fact that uh, kids are getting out of school and it's gonna be almost impossible to have you guys hear me while i'm trying to do this um, with the kids playing next door and everything plus there's probably been like 50 cars driving by already so I've, I've already shot this little segment like 10 times because people keep driving by with their loud exhaust or loud music so next video on the Badlander build will probably be 
this cross member and the connection of all of the suspension links up front and the kind of denouement of the front suspension and how that all goes together now that I've got this kind of figured and the doubler and transfer keys and all that fun stuff. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.